Welcome to Santa Cruz, California, a beachside town known for its beautiful coastlines, awesome mountain bike trails, and of course, Santa Cruz bikes. Join us today in our latest Behind the Brands feature where we meet some of the key employees that help make this company tick, how they work to assemble some of the best mountain bikes they can, and stoke riders out all over the world. What's up, dude? Welcome. Thanks, man. Good. Good to be here. Hey, I'm Garen. This is Santa Cruz Bikes for a little factory tour today. So this is showroom. Uh, it's obviously empty right now because it's closed on Monday morning, but um, we like to think of this as sort of the culmination of, of everything we do here. So everything behind these doors uh, is a lot of work and a lot of people making it happen to build these bikes. And this is a place where anyone could come in and demo a bike, grab a coffee, hang out, and just show off a bit. So yeah, my favorite thing about Paydirt is that it's uh, essentially a it's a friend maker for us. So it's a, it's, a, it's a million dollar fund we put in over the next three years to fund different trail advocacy projects. But what it's meant is it's opened up this big, gigantic network of people that we know and places we can go ride. Awesome. And what, what's kind of the main motivator, the passion behind, you know, you guys not only making bikes, but being involved in these kind of charitable? It's, uh, maybe you can call it self-serving, but we can't move bikes in a market where there's no trails. And what we want to do is go to different places and ride and support amazing people doing amazing things. And that doesn't mean uh, it's not always about retail, it's not always about business, it's about building infrastructure for people like us to go have fun. So. All the employees here are incentivized to ride their bikes to work. So you'll see back in the factory, there's a, there's a hook for every employee, all 240 of them, to hang a bike within the factory. You log each day that you ride, those, those points go towards dollars. You can spend them here, you can spend them at KBP, you can spend them at the local supermarket, or you can spend them at the taco truck out front. No way, yeah. that's really cool. And what would you say is the percent, percentage of riders, workers that do ride into work? We've got people from all over here. We've got people commuting from over the hill that obviously can't ride, people from South County, but I'd say easily half the people who come here to work every day have ridden here. Wow, that's really cool. Yeah. So we're here with JT. JT Bars is the face of the Carbon Chameleon and also yeah. uh, the, what is your position here? Uh, production manager. Yeah, so uh, responsible for everything from uh, shipping bikes, building bikes, getting product in, keeping the warehouse in order, all that stuff. Big job. Uh, that's the best guy ever to lead a factory tour, so let's, let's get on with it. Yeah. Tanner building Casey fresh off of a third in his slalom category. Nice. So all of our frames come in uh, in pieces. We have front and rear triangles. We can get a ton more uh, in that way uh, into receiving. So they come in, links are prepped back in our hardware prep area, and then they're all brought up in carts that we use um, and built from old frame boxes. So this is what our aluminum frames come in. Put five of them together, that's our five up, and this is how orders make their way to the builders. As we bring in frames, we want to do all of our assembly here. We get six to 10 front triangles in a big carton. Again, everything's cardboard. We try and reduce as much plastic as possible. We bring those in, we bring uh, rear triangles in and matching sets of 10 as well. These little uh, foam bags get reused when we have to ship warranty frames out or we're shipping frames to international customers, stuff like that. And then all this stuff will make its way up to the builders. One thing I always think is cool about the process is like, so we have our own factory in China. Our own factory, of course, we're the only brand making anything in there. They send us a bunch of frames in a box, a bunch of rear swing arms in a box. We do that for a couple of reasons. One, you can pack way, way more product in a shipping container if you've got, what is this? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight frames in a, in a box and eight swing arms in a box. Then, it, then you could, if you had assembled product coming over, there's a lot more air in that process, a lot more air in every box and probably about 60% of the product in the same shipping container if you assembled it overseas. And of course, the other part about that is JT's got a big crew of people here and um, we, we use that big crew to make sure our quality is on point. If we have this stuff assembled somewhere else, it's kind of in someone else's hands. And that's not what we want. So. 
So we'll have anywhere from uh, three to really seven frame builders at any one time. Everybody starts learning how to do frame prep. Uh, so Jordan over here who's prepping was our fastest frame builder, is now our frames lead, helping train the crew up. Uh, Amber would be our most experienced frame builder right now, working on the Maverick over there. And um, everything comes through here, whether it's a frame only going to one of our international distributors, or it's a domestic going to a bike shop, uh, ABS down the street, something like that. Uh, everything comes through here. And like we said, it's uh, checked to make sure material is the same, color's the same, no scratches on there. You can see we'll put some special rags in, things like that to make sure the links aren't damaging stuff. And then the frames will get wiped down with alcohol again to try and get all the fingerprints off. So when it shows up at the shop, it's looking fresh and brand new for you. This is the supermarket cart, built and designed in-house. Um, I'm a big proponent of having fun with these things and making sure they have fun names. So they're all labeled individually, all 100 of them. And this has a specific layout for every part to go. So you'll see the manual, the axle, the brakes, saddle, it all goes in a specific spot. So when someone's going to throw the chain in the box, they know exactly where to look for it. Also tells them if it's not there, oh hey, somebody missed something. This is the original Tallboy One mold. Case in point, watch your ears. Blur XC29 was the code name for the Tallboy before the Tallboy was a thing. Now um, we're in its fourth iteration. It looks nothing like this, but still got the mold here. This is where we build the wheels. Um, this facility builds every single wheel that goes on any Santa Cruz or Juliana bike ever. Uh, we don't take in any pre-built wheels here. So every wheel, be it reserved or not, is built right here. We got John to give us a quick tour on it. Every wheel that goes out on a Santa Cruz bike is built here in the wheel department. So how long is the process to get the wheel built? So once the components arrive in the department, every step, hub loading, lacing, catching, taping, start to finish if everything goes smooth. It's uh, about eight minutes per wheel. Hey, that is fast. This lacing machine uh, will take, you know, 32 nipples in this case and just blast them onto the, uh, onto the spokes here. It's, you can change uh, the, the, the amount of uh, revolutions or the amount of turns every single spoke gets. You can adjust them all independent of one another. And off this machine, we get them to about 75% of finished tension. This stage takes about, I mean, someone's really good if they can do it in about a minute 15 per wheel. Yeah. So how long do you do it? Well, let's see. We're, we're counting him down. He's at 59 seconds right now. Oh, man. No pressure. No pressure, Adam. So every single uh, wheel will land into one of these truing machines. These things are pretty cool. It'll spin the wheel a few times, and it basically, these, these two little arms here move side to side. It'll infer the dish from that and the side stroke. And so they'll, they'll come in and they'll grab the nipples and they can, they can sense the torque on there. So you can, uh, you, know, you can change all the different torque settings. Yeah, the rollers that, that spin the rim are fixed in place. And it's the side to side uh, uh, hub action that, that determines the, uh, oh, wow. that it infers the side stroke and, uh, and dish from. And, every, and if it doesn't like it, it spits it in the red zone. And if it likes it, it puts it in the green zone. Red zone goes back in or gets a, hand, a special hand touch, and green zone goes on to final check, which is on, done by hand on a turning stand. What's your big tip to make wheels last and stay tight? Spoke prep? Yeah, just de-stress them, de-stress them, de-stress them. Okay. Uh, make sure you get all that wind up out of those spokes. Uh, yeah, that's really the, the key to it. Oh, we got a green one. Pat is one of the original Outland frames, holder of the original VPP patent. Look at that. Yeah. So this is a machine shop uh, for, primarily for making production mules and for making all of our fixtures. This is Stu. Stu is our automation, industrial automation engineer. He made the fork cutting machine you saw and pretty much any other automated fixture in the building. What is this machine? Five axis? No, it's just three axis. Three axis CNC mill. 
If you open the door, you get sprayed with, with coolant, but there's something being cut in there. And this is Mike's welding station. This is a typical, typical prototype for, um, <laughs> for whatever, whatever bike we might be making. We're always working on something. And so this is kind of the level of aluminum production we use for our, our, our factory mules. So that's, that's the machine shop. From there, uh, we'll go on and check out the Harbin Lab where we can make actual carbon parts. Knock, knock. All right, so we're here in the semi-clean room. Uh, this is uh, where these guys are, are making carbon parts, and that's about the extent of my knowledge. So, Joe? It's a clean room and a layup room. We have a, there's a freezer in the back that has all of our pre-preg in it. Uh, you take some material out of the freezer and throw it on the, the cutting table here. So this little uh, cutting head can cut out all the patterns that we use for to make a part like that. And then and at that point you fold it or shape it and mold it? Uh, this is basically a latex bladder under here. You can take your patterns and like, so like kind of massage it onto the bladder. Like something like this gets like, you know, around 20 layers or something like that of UD. Put it in your mold and then close this thing up and they like, it's got some screws that hold it together. And then we would take it over to the press and heat it and put air in it. So this is our new wheel fatigue machine. Generally the purpose is to roll wheels on it until they fall apart. Mostly we're testing like nipple and spoke combinations as well as our different rims that we made. It has aluminum blocks on there that are uh, different heights. Currently we're using 20 millimeter height bumps and it, that's just to provide impact on the tire like if you're going down a trail and riding over rocks and stuff. All right, so that's pretty much it. Um, thanks guys for coming out. Absolutely, man. Glad to, to sit down and take a little break after walking through and seeing your massive facility and all the stuff you got going on here. A lot going on in there. So before we came in, we posted a little something on Instagram. Oh boy. Asking for some questions <laughs> from our viewers of what they want to know about you guys. So right. I need the new 2022 Chameleon in Carbon. It's not going to happen. Someone wants to see Rob Roscoff do a hand plant. He sworn off skating a long time ago and you will not see him do a hand plant. Okay. <laughs> Any plans for a high pivot idler solution? Uh, a solution. Now that's the odd word there. I know. A solution to what? I'm curious what that means, but maybe your solution to high pivot idler bike? We're always looking at what different suspension designs are out there. And, and uh, while we are definitely have built over the years and continue to build mules with high pivots and idlers, um, if it's not the right thing for the purpose, we're not gonna be convinced that it is. And we're not gonna come out with a bike that we, that we think supply, that provides a solution to a problem that we don't see yet. Thank you guys for tuning in for the latest episode of Behind the Brands here with Santa Cruz Bikes in Santa Cruz, California. We're gonna try and dip out and ride some bikes, have a little fun. Make sure you subscribe and stay tuned for future videos. Thank you guys for watching and we'll see you next time. Bye.